Something is happening inside Tesla right now that feels easy to miss if you only look at headlines. You see a few leaked photos. You hear a supplier rumor. You scroll past a casting update. And it all sounds like normal internet noise. But when you line up the leaks from Fremont, the supplier movement near Shanghai, and the quiet changes inside Tesla's structural casting program, the pattern stops looking random. It starts looking like Tesla is finally aiming straight at the everyday American driver. Not the person buying a $60,000 tech toy. Not the early adopter who will forgive weird problems because it feels future. I'm talking about the guy choosing between a used Camry, a five-year-old Model 3, or a compact SUV with 80,000 miles already on it, hopping it doesn't surprise him with a repair bill next month. The person who needs a car that just works in real life. Cold mornings, long commutes, grocery runs, highway miles, kids or grandkids in the back. A job that starts early. A life that doesn't pause because a battery got cranky. And that's why the 2026 Model 2 is suddenly such a big deal. Because if Tesla gets this right, it won't just be another cheaper EV. It could be the first mass-market electric car that feels like it was designed around normal ownership, not just a spec sheet. But here's the uncomfortable question. What exactly are the three huge changes Tesla is planning for the 2026 Model 2? And are they actually practical for people who rely on their car every single day? Can these upgrades make an EV cheaper to own than a gasoline car you've been nursing along for 20 years? And are these changes still going to make sense if you live where winter hits hard, or you drive long distances, or you don't have the perfect home charging setup? That's what we're breaking down today, step by step, in plain English, with numbers that actually connect to the way you drive. And before we dive in, if you want practical EV coverage without the fluff, subscribe to Torque Element and help us hit our 3,000 subscriber goal. It costs nothing, but it tells the algorithm that real-world analysis still matters. Now let's get into the first change, because this one is the biggest and also the most controversial. Tesla appears to be moving toward a hybrid solid-state battery platform for the Model 2. Not the full science fiction version that some people imagine, but a partial solid electrolyte structure designed to raise energy density without turning the pack into a luxury car cost bomb. Multiple suppliers in Japan and South Korea have shifted production schedules for ceramic-based electrolyte films, and the chatter around Tesla's supply chain suggests they want to fit this into a compact pack in the mid-40s to low 50s kilowatt hour range depending on trim. If that sounds boring, don't worry. The important part is what it changes for you. Right now, many entry-level Tesla packs, especially the ones built around iron phosphate chemistry, often sit in the range of roughly 160 to 170 watt hours per kilogram. That's fine, and it's safe, and it's affordable, but it's not light. A semi-solid configuration, even a conservative one could push the Model 2 pack towards something like 220 to 245 watt-hours per kilogram. That difference is not small. It can mean the same usable energy, with a meaningfully lighter battery. And in a compact car that's trying to stay under about 3,000 pounds, a lighter pack changes everything even before you touch the motor. Less mass means the car feels more eager without needing extra power. It means the suspension doesn't have to fight as hard. It means the brakes have an easier job. It means efficiency improves because the car spends less energy moving its own weight around. It's one of the simplest truths in vehicle physics, and it's why weight reduction often feels like a hidden performance upgrade. Now the range side matters even more because the Model 2 is not supposed to be a city-only car. If Tesla is truly aiming at everyday drivers, they need this vehicle to feel comfortable on the freeway, not just around town. With aerodynamic drag expected to land somewhere in the low two-tenths range, and a smaller frontal area than a Model 3, even a pack around 48 kilowatt-hours 
could realistically deliver something like the high 200s to low 300s on the official cycle in ideal conditions. In real-world highway driving, steady speed, normal weather, you're still looking at a number that doesn't feel like a gamble. It's the difference between I hope I make it and I'm fine. Now let's talk charging, because range is only half the story. Charging is what decides whether the car feels like freedom or like homework. Solid-state materials handle heat differently. They don't swell the same way liquid electrolytes can. That stability can allow higher peak charging currents, assuming the rest of the pack design supports it. Early modeling suggests a semi-solid Tesla pack might safely accept a bit over 200 kilowatts on current fast chargers under good conditions, and with next-generation stations, brief bursts could push higher when temperatures are right. For drivers, that could translate into a shorter real stop. Not a sit-there-and-kill time stop, but a stretch, restroom, quick coffee, back-on-the-road stop. Going from around 10% to around 70% in something like the low teens of minutes would be a real shift for an entry-level vehicle. It's the kind of shift that makes road trips feel normal again instead of planned around long charging breaks. But the part that matters most, especially if you keep cars for a long time, is safety and cycle life. Without a flammable liquid electrolyte, thermal runaway becomes harder to trigger. That doesn't mean impossible but it changes the risk profile in a way that engineers care about deeply. Suppliers testing these semi-solid structures have reported that punctured cells can handle extreme heat without sliding into uncontrolled ignition the same way older designs might. And then there's longevity. Solid electrolytes can degrade more slowly. In theory, this could allow the pack to sustain several thousand full cycles before dropping to around 80% capacity. That kind of cycle life, if it holds up in the real world, pushes the model too closer to a car you keep because you want to, not because you have to. It's the kind of durability that makes an EV feel like a long-term household tool, not a fragile gadget. But let's be fair. This is also where skepticism is healthy. Lab behavior is not always road behavior. Real life includes heat waves, winter cold, daily fast charging, and thousands of little vibrations and stresses that don't show up in clean testing rooms. So yes, this battery shift looks promising, but we should treat it as high potential until production vehicles prove it over time. Now here's the second major change, and this one connects directly to how the car feels every day, how much energy it uses, and how reliable it is long term. Test inch range. And for some buyers, that will sound like a downgrade. But here's the truth. Screen size is not the same as screen speed, and it's not the same as usability. If Tesla keeps the interface fast, keeps voice control strong, and keeps the key functions easy to reach, most people will adapt quickly. For a budget vehicle, it's also a cost win. A smaller screen is cheaper, lighter, and draws less power. There are also signs Tesla may use a newer embedded computer platform that improves interface response while drawing less energy. That matters in a compact EV because every watt counts. When you're chasing efficiency, small power savings add up over time. Safety may get a meaningful upgrade too, partly because of how the pack behaves structurally. If the semi-solid pack holds its shape better during deformation, Tesla can reinforce crash rails and door structures without adding heavy, layered reinforcements. That's how you build stiffness without turning the car into a tank. Engineers have been modeling side impact loads that compete with popular gasoline compacts, even with a lighter overall vehicle weight. If Tesla nails that balance, the Model 2 could end up feeling unusually solid for its price bracket. Now we have to talk about the controversial interior change, because it's the kind of thing that can make people either excited or furious. There are hints Tesla may continue removing traditional stocks and physical selectors, using capacitive touch zones and predictive gear selection the way newer Teslas have experimented with. Tesla believes this reduces mechanical parts, lowers failure points, and cuts assembly time per vehicle. That last part matters a lot when you're producing a high-volume car. 
Seconds matter when you multiply them by hundreds of thousands of vehicles. But practicality matters too. Some drivers, especially older drivers, will need time to adjust. It's not impossible, but it's a real learning curve. Tesla can reduce frustration by making the interface clearer, making the steering inputs feel consistent, and ensuring the system never guesses wrong in a way that scares people. If Tesla gets that right, many drivers will move on quickly. If Tesla gets it wrong, it becomes a daily irritation. Now here's the part that could quietly change the value story, Tesla's software approach for the Model 2. Instead of pushing people toward one expensive driver assist package, Tesla appears to be considering more affordable tiers. That matters because most drivers don't need everything. They want the features that matter on real American roads. Lane centering, adaptive cruise, limited automated passing, the tools that reduce stress on freeways and make long drives calmer. There's also a rumored cabin sensor array update, smaller, cheaper, but smarter. An RGB and infrared camera module that can track fatigue at night without blasting high power infrared light. That helps Tesla meet stricter safety expectations while keeping power draw low. It's a very Tesla move, not adding expensive luxury, but adding targeted intelligence. And finally, comfort in winter, where so many budget EVs fail. Tesla is testing a compact heat pump derived from the Model Y system, but miniaturized to fit the Model 2's smaller front area. Early predictions suggest better winter heating efficiency than older systems. If that holds, it helps the battery stay in a better operating window, and it helps real range stay closer to what drivers expect. For buyers in northern states, that may be the difference between this works for me and I can't risk it. So when you look at these three changes together, the story becomes clear. Tesla is not just trying to build a cheap EV. Tesla is trying to build a cheap EV that doesn't feel cheap in the ways that actually matter. A lighter, higher density semi-solid pack that supports faster charging and longer life. A new drive unit tuned for efficiency, quiet operation, and long-term reliability and a simplified, smarter cabin with stronger safety structure and more practical driver assistance options. Now it's your turn. Which one matters most to you in real life, range, charging speed, or long-term reliability? And if you live in a cold climate or drive long distances, tell me what your biggest concern is, winter range, charging availability, or repair costs. If you enjoyed this breakdown, like the video, Drop your thoughts in the comments and subscribe to Torque Element to help us reach our 3,000 subscriber goal. Like, comment, and subscribe to Torque Element.